Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 57. At long last, the day has finally arrived. The day when we finally start working on the new city in earnest. We managed to hop over the last hurdle for Bobinski in the last video, so it is now ready to begin building. I was so swept up in the excitement of finally being able to put our new construction yard to use, that once more I forgot to work on our water infrastructure. I better add it to my to-do list, so I don't forget it in the future. But apart from the new city, we will also upgrade the road between Bobinski and Adumski, finalize the new chemical factory district, and continue expanding our fleet of vehicles. We will also add a couple extensions to Bobinski, like extra helipads, another distribution office for the rail CO deliveries, and near the end, we will also start building a new road maintenance depot. After the last episode, I think we all agree that some extra road cleaning wouldn't be the worst idea ever. To start out with, I will consolidate our construction office groups a little. Separating Adumski into two groups was a bit of a mistake. So from now on, Lukovo will be group 1, Adumski will be group 2, and Bobinski will be group 3, regardless of CO type. If it's from the same area, both road and helicopter offices will go in the same group. I also added the three new heli COs to the local distribution offices, so they get fuel. They will need it, that's for sure. I already know what kind of machinery I will need in the new helicopter offices, so let's order them now. We will need two bulldozers, two excavators, two pavers, and two tower cranes in each office. I forgot to add the pavement rollers, which I will need to fix in the next episode. We also have a couple dumpers ready, so might as well send them to Bobinski. For starters, I will buy the two helicopters we have room for in each office. Later, we will have room for more. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough room between the offices for roads, so we will need them to go around to reach the main road. Anyways, one triple helipad for every office will be more than enough. We have three times the loading capacity in the construction yard compared to Adumski, so with three times the helicopters, I expect similar waiting times overall. Well, not quite three times as many helicopters. The Adumski office has one extra single helipad, which I decided to leave out here. With snow melting, we can finally finish building the permanent gas station. Should see the notification about it soon. Let's not forget to add the material pickup points, and they are ready to go. And they're off. Here comes the thing that will help speed up the construction process in some major ways. I of course speak of temporary dirt road connections. It will allow construction machinery to reach points normally inaccessible until the roads before that point are done. With this, they will be able to start working on roads deep in the middle of the city, and start working on buildings that would be otherwise unreachable for months, maybe years. That infernal gas station is finally finished. Let's add fuel deliveries to it and we can remove the temporary one we built as a stopgap measure in the last episode.
Anyways, let's keep adding these service roads. They will be a huge amount of help. Oh yeah. I can see a lot of bright green designations. None of the buildings are reachable by road vehicles just yet, but that's a situation that won't last for long. And with a lot of construction sites open for business, Bob Inski springs to life. We will need to add another distribution office to this place, so we can keep the new rail construction office supplied with the materials it need to keep working. It's going to be a bit of a drive away from the city, but hopefully it won't be a problem, since the track layers spend such a long time away on jobs, that this one office will be able to keep up with the demand. Finding the appropriate place for it was a bit tricky. We barely started, and I can see quite a few piles of gravel lining our future roads already. We are off to a good start. Let's keep this ball rolling, and buy those extra helicopters. Three more cargo choppers in each office will boost the speed of construction considerably. Here, I wanted to see if we can start working on the road upgrades, but the lack of open nodes on the heli driveway scared me off for now. Don't worry, we will manage to finish the entire stretch between the two construction yards today. Good thing I caught this one. I almost forgot to disallow citizens from moving into the city. If people started piling in before the service buildings were ready for them, that would have been a disaster. Next up, let's place some greenery around our new planetarium park. We can start with some simple beech trees, and see where we can go once they are mature. I wanted to have distinct patches of densely and sparsely populated areas, but these trees have a very big crown on them, so they will blend together, even in the less packed places. That's fine, I will just treat it as a sort of arboretum, instead of just a regular old park. I also added a couple extra bushes for good measure. And to make sure these monuments will stand out, I cleaned up their edges, so they are not overgrown with grass and trees. Okay, let's leave it for now, and come back later once the trees are all grown up. I will now go around, and place signals at every junction around the city. All of these signals will be two-way, so they are not the final configuration. They are only meant to ensure that the track layers are able to work on as many segments in parallel as possible. I purposefully left out one, since Sunflower was already working on that segment. If I added that signal now, it would have sent it home. Let's wait for it to finish, we can place other signals around other junctions in the meantime.
Okay, Sunflower is heading home. We can add that last signal. With this, I don't need to worry about those two having to wait for each other too much. They will be able to work on whatever they are working on in peace. While the city is under construction, we can finalize the new chemical plants. You might remember that I wasn't happy with the current passenger station in this area. It's barely close enough for the main factories, but too far away for the wood cutting stations. If we place it up at the entrance, that should allow access to every workplace in the district. I will also add a temporary dirt road connection towards Bobinski. It will most likely end up being a permanent addition, but for that, I will need to make it look good. For now, this will do. Next, let's deal with how trains will reach the place. The branch between Bobinski and the new city will be a good place for connecting it up to the rest of the network. Now we only need to sort out the usual splitting of the tracks into five different branches for the five different stations. Also, let's not forget to get rid of the original passenger station. There. We have the five branches. Now we only need to turn them into the usual two lane tracks that will connect up to the network. We will of course need a crossing. So trains can enter all the branches, and can also leave, no matter which one they gone into. From here, it's a simple double-tracked affair all the way to the main line junction. Sure, the sub-branches themselves are incredibly long, but they should only see low traffic, so hopefully it won't be a problem. If it does ever become an issue, I think we can add some extra waiting areas for trains to queue in.
The trees are big enough. I think we can add a couple acacias for some variety. They should add a different shade of green. And since we're here, let's add a couple pine trees too for good measure. If we want to treat this place as an arboretum, we might as well use all the trees at our disposal. I don't know how I will use the poplars yet, they tend to work better along roads. Anyways, let's see if we can add some more roads to the work list. Things are progressing very smoothly. Let's keep working on the chemical district. Next up, let's add some trees for the woodcutters. I will pack the trees as dense as possible. As for the rail tracks, I will clean them up when they are ready. Also, let's check on the Electrograd plant, and see how its grain storage is handling the demand. It's May, and it's almost empty. I think it's just about the right amount of agricultural production. We managed to hit it by accident. Nice. When we get around to placing the fields for the new factories, we just need to place twice as many, and we should be okay. So, let's get on that. I will try my best to avoid placing too many fields with cut down areas. I really wish the developers would add freeform farm field placement, it would open the gates for some really nice looking agricultural areas. Sixteen fields, way more than double of the overall capacity of the original chemical plant's farm area. I think we will be okay. By the way, this is where it became obvious that the temporary road between the factories and Bobinski will have to be made permanent, now that we have farms connected to it. I used to place these roads in a much more organized fashion, but I kind of like this tiny bit more chaotic approach.
Now we just fill in the rest of the area with trees, and move on. I hope you don't mind, but I will increase the rate of fast forwarding to 8 times the normal speed. Hey, we managed to catch that last small open wagon. Now that it's gone, all the carriages are as up to date as possible. I really like this park. Once the planetarium and the different monuments are all finished, it will be the crowning jewel of the city. While checking on things around Bobinski, I noticed that the asphalt and concrete plants were offline due to the lack of workers. So I went ahead, and ordered 10 more microbuses at Autozov. But then I saw that we have two of the original production orders still sitting in the road depot next door. So I will send those out, and hold back on those 10 new buses. When I was checking on the availability of the different building materials, I noticed that the gravel production is struggling to keep up. As it turns out, we still don't have enough trucks delivering the raw stone, so I ordered six more, two for each line. And this is where I decided to not bother producing those microbuses. After checking on the factories a bit later, they were working fine, so let's keep using the current fleet for now. We have a new name to give out, this time for the livestock farm. Mezzo Combinat. It just means meat factory, as far as I could tell from a quick Google Translate. As for the grain supply at the current chemical factory, we are one month away from harvest, and we are about to run out. We might have a week or two when we don't have the necessary crops, but that's acceptable. Going by that, we should be okay with the new factories. It's quite incredible how much we can accomplish when we have our house in order. 
we have quite a few roads already finished, and I can see a couple dirt mounds on some of the buildings, meaning that their foundation works have begun. Now, here's something that might be a bit controversial. I've decided to move the capital of the Republic to the new city. So, it will be named Novi Mutograd. My justification is that renaming cities was pretty commonplace in Soviet times. You know, Leningrad, Stalingrad, etc. At least that's how I look at it. And that of course meant that old Mutograd was now open for a new name. And thankfully, Brooke Murphy, who Brooke Leningrad was named after, gave me one. So, from now on, Old Mutograd will be called Valentinsk, after her girlfriend Valentine. And once I took a look at the old city, I decided to move the old area name tag, so it's more central. Now I only need to remember to refer to these places with their new names. The roads leading to the airport bridge were already finished. I decided to pause construction on it for now. Let's concentrate on the city, and move on to the airport when it's done. Once that roller is done, we can tell all the construction offices to concentrate on that distribution office, even though it won't be used for a while. But, that driveway going to the office gave me the opportunity to place the necessary service connections, so we can at last start upgrading the gravel roads around here. Alright, that's half of the project started. We still have the roads near Adumski to upgrade. I will get on that a bit later. The current dirt road going to New Mutograd was never meant to be permanent. Now that we are starting to upgrade the roads around Bobinski, we might as well add in the permanent access point for road vehicles.
having it run parallel with the rail track seemed fitting. Now, this level crossing is very likely going to be changed into an overpass in the next episode. Obviously, it will not be the only road entering the city, but for the foreseeable future, it will be the most utilized. As for how it connects up to the city itself, I think this corner piece will do fine. I think I will need to wait for the dirt road to be removed, before I can make a decent looking intersection. And this was a bit of a surprise. The only currently available rail box car is going off the market. I can vaguely remember the devs saying in one of the recent patch notes that they fixed an issue, where there was a period of time when no box cars were available on the market. And yet, we now have no box cars that we can purchase. I was really tempted to buy them while I could, and by the time I made the decision to do so, they were already gone. That's a bit of a weird issue to have in the game. Maybe that fix only works for fresh starts since that update. We've been playing this Republic for quite a while. Anyways, it should be available again once we hit 1996, when all of the vehicles become purchasable again. I think we can manage for half a year more. Well, that's quite a few helicopters wasting fuel there. Hey, it seems the train station is ready to receive proper construction materials. It might be the first structure that gets built in the city. All those helicopters are waiting for gravel. Let's help them out, and send out the dumpers we have available in the car factory, so they can boost our gravel production a little. That's three extra trucks hauling stone, and we have three more being built. It seems I managed to mess up the color scheme a little. Instead of the orange EPFU variant, we need to use the orange TEFU paint job instead. Which reminds me, I should add new colors to the Bobinski vehicles. I didn't set what color to use when I ordered them in the factory. One more thing for the to-do list. The roadworks at Bobinski aren't progressing as I would have liked. So for just a little bit, let's stop working on the city, and focus on finishing that highway, before winter ruins everything again. And since we have a tremendous amount of construction capacity focused on the job, let's make sure we take full advantage of it, and finish paving it all the way to Adumski. Let's add in the usual side connections, so all the road segments can be worked on in parallel, finishing things faster.
You know what? Let's go all the way to Alexandrograd too. I won't bother with a side road for it, but as a secondary project, we might as well do it. With all these machines working, it will be done in no time. And to think, not so long ago we were struggling to pave over the road between Kirkimov and the nearby border crossing. Yep, still no box car available for purchase. Should be back at around spring next year, so it's not really a big emergency. We have more than enough to cope until then. While we wait for that long stretch of road to be finished, we can at long last turn our attention to these houses. I completely forgot to add decorations for them. It takes me a little to find the center point of these driveways, but it becomes easy once I get in the groove. I didn't want to waste the time of our helicopters, so I only planted some trees in between the decorative pavements. The only available construction offices were in Lukovo, and they are road only. Good thing I looked around. There's another pair of houses waiting to be decorated. The roads are progressing nicely. With that DO finished, we might as well order the vehicles for it. They will only need to keep the new rail CO stocked up with materials. I decided to use the vehicles for the other office as an example. We will use one covered hull truck, one dumper, and three open hull ones. I was tempted to go for two dumpers, but I think it's better if we divide them based on the variety of materials, instead of raw amounts. We can store a lot of gravel, but we have more types that are carried by the open hull trucks. By the way, we have two more dumpers ready to start hauling raw stone. Once the last one is finished, we will have increased our gravel output by about 50%. I am a bit surprised that a single gravel processing plant is so good at keeping us supplied. Our biggest bottleneck is still the amount of raw stone deliveries. Anyways, at this point, we can start removing some of the service connections. Things got done real fast.
And with that, we can finally add a proper intersection for the road going to New Mutigrad. Which reminded me. Since winter is fast approaching, we better add a road maintenance depot to the area. Should help things move along a bit smoother after snowfall. I almost placed it there, but then I remembered that it will need power for refueling vehicles. It should be way closer to Bobinski. I didn't really want to move these roads, but it turned out to be necessary. We only have a couple rollers still working on the remaining segments. Let's watch the last one finish, and then it's time to remove the rest of the dirt roads. And done. We just managed to pave over a road that is several kilometers long, and we barely broke a sweat. Very nice work everyone. At this point, we can continue working on Mutigrad. Wow, that was one of the most productive episodes ever. We managed to finish a very long stretch of road in record time, and the new city is coming along nicely too. Sure, without having the buildings up, it doesn't look like much of a progress, but the amount of road work we were able to do is quite something. As for the next episode, I really need to start putting more effort into the water and sewage infrastructure. I can only hope that my plans for having the water wells on the top of the mountains, and the treatment plants a bit further down, just above the reservoirs will be a workable plan. I still want to use cable cars for moving workers and chemicals up to the top, which will cut down on quite a bit of work, since we don't need to build roads on the mountainsides. Besides that, we can start thinking about how things will be set up around New Mutigrad as well. I am mostly thinking about local bus services, power and heating distribution, things like that. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. If you did, you can support me on Ko-fi, for which you can find a link in the description. If you are not the donating type, that is fine too, you can still support me by leaving a like, or subscribing to the channel, which just might motivate me to make more. Until then, see you later.